Hello, today we're going to talk about the cost of living in Seattle. So, I live in Seattle. I've lived here all my life. I'm a real estate broker and I did have the opportunity to go to college out of state in North Carolina. And I can tell you the cost of living in Seattle is much different than the cost of living in North Carolina. So uh, if you're thinking about moving to the Seattle area, relocating, maybe you've got a job offer you're thinking about, then it's a good idea to kind of weigh your options and see if the income that you'll be getting as a result of your job here that brings you to the Seattle area, is that going to actually be a good decision based on some of the other things that you want to be doing? So uh, a lot of people tell me that they don't want to be house poor. They're concerned that if they get into a really expensive house or live in an expensive city, then they won't be able to do some of the other things that they want to do. So it's important to kind of do your budgeting in advance. And if you can take a hard look at what you're doing now, where you spend your money now, and where you anticipate spending it in your new lifestyle, that'll give you a good idea of uh, whether the numbers here in Seattle are gonna work for you. So typically cost of living is calculated by looking at the cost of a bundle of goods. It's sort of an economics term. The bundle of goods could be abstract, but if I were to buy you know, the same groceries, the same housing, the same car in one part of the world or another, how much would that cost me? You might have heard of the Big Mac Index, which is another way of looking at those types of things because they want you to kind of have something that's a control, that's uniform, that's the same everywhere, which is the Big Mac. <laughs> so now, you know, obviously everything is not the same everywhere, but you can get an idea of um, what some of the things are going to be like. This is Emily Cressy, your digitally enabled Puget Sound community advisor. So let's dive right in. When we're talking about the cost of living in Seattle, tax is going to be a big factor. Now, what are the taxes and where are you going to pay them? Number one is a very important thing we do not have any income tax. So all the money that you make is yours to keep except what you pay to the federal government. So you'll on April 15th, you'll pay your federal tax return, but you do not file and you do not need to pay any kind of state tax return. So for a lot of high income earners, that's a really big deal and it's a, a huge plus of living anywhere in the state of Washington. However, in order to make up for that, what the state has imposed is a sales tax. So this means um, it's not on grocery items, but it is on most retail purchases and prepared like restaurant food. Uh, so all your clothes are gonna pay that, all of your um, you know, Chipotle, which is what I eat all the time, you're gonna take you're gonna pay, and that's about 10%. So while you won't have that 10% coming off of your income, you will have it off of your spending. So if you look at your existing budget and see what you're spending on things like clothes, shoes, and uh, takeout food, I don't know, what else do people buy? That's the only thing you need to buy. Stuff on Amazon. <laughs> Those are the things that are going to cost you 10% in tax. There's also a gasoline tax. So we tend to have fairly expensive gasoline here. And I looked it up, the gasoline tax is 45 cents per gallon. So if you do a lot of driving, you might wanna take a look at the tax, I'm sorry, the gas prices per gallon here in Seattle and see if that's significantly different than what you've been paying elsewhere. Another tax we have that you're gonna to wanna to know about if you're thinking about buying property in this area is property tax. So every state, every area has property tax. They use it to fund things like the fire department and the schools and the police and those types of things. But I feel that our property tax is fairly high in part because our property values are so high. But I would just say roughly about a million dollar house, you're gonna pay about a thousand dollars a month in tax. On a half a million dollar house, you're gonna pay about $500 a month in property tax. So just be aware that a, a home in this area, this freestanding, standalone home, is going to start at about four to five hundred thousand, depending on the part of town. And the median home price right now in King County is six hundred and eighty-five thousand. And so you're going to have 
your budget is going to have to be high if you want to buy something and you're going to have not only when you're looking at the mortgage calculator figuring out what your mortgage is going to be you also need to add your your property insurance which is not that bad and your property tax which does kind of stink if you're living in a condo with a homeowners association like an apartment building style condo um, you also have to add your homeowners association fees onto that, which are typically going to run you $300 to $400 per month. Obviously, there are some that are more that are in a premium location or that have a lot of amenities, and there are some that are less, especially if there's a condo association that doesn't cover insurance or yard work or exterior maintenance. I'll say more about condos in another video because I have a lot of condo stuff to discuss. So they say death and taxes are inevitable, and I guess that's true here. But just remember, no income tax. We just have tax on spending. So this benefits you the most if you're a high income earner with uh, low spending frugal habits. Just like the millionaire next door, just like Dave Ramsey would tell you to be. And obviously your biggest cost in moving to Seattle will be your housing. Now, I know you're probably trying to figure out what the Chipotle index is because I don't eat Big Macs. I don't know what the Big Mac index is. But here, I eat Chipotle all the time <laughs> and I love it. Uh, it makes me feel healthy. I don't know that it is, but um, the chicken burrito at Chipotle costs $7.45. Obviously, guac, extra meat, those things are extra. But um, remember that you have to pay 10% tax on that. So you're gonna be walking out of there for about 8.20 on your chicken burrito, just to say. Hey, today we're talking about the cost of living in Seattle. Yes, I am Emily Cressy. Yes, I am in my car. I am a real estate broker, always busy, always on the run. I am sitting here in Burien, South Seattle, in front of a mustard yellow fixer upper home. And my client is a little bit late, but that's okay because the client always comes first and I am happy to serve. So I'm making good use of my time and I'm making this video that I've been wanting to do for a little while. We're talking about the cost of living in Seattle. A lot of people who are coming to Seattle for jobs, relocating, have family in the area, just want to experience all that the Pacific Northwest has to offer, which is a lot. Check out my other videos on the pros and cons of living in the Seattle area. Uh, Anyway, why ever it is that you've decided to start researching coming to Seattle, cost of living is a big question in people's minds because they are wondering, is it too expensive? Can I actually afford to live here? So we're going to answer that today. What is the cost of living? The cost of living is the expense of economists like myself would describe it as a bundle of goods. What does it cost to buy the necessary items that people typically enjoy? What is the cost of a gallon of milk? What is the cost of a gallon of gas? What is the cost of a 1,000 square foot three bedroom home? Things like that that are somewhat uniform and can be compared from location to location to see if it costs more to buy something. For example, when you go out to Hawaii for vacation every three months, like one does, then you will notice that the cost of goods is very expensive there because they can't make and produce all that stuff on their tiny little tropical paradise island. No. They have to ship it in on a barge. So a lot of the things that they have in Hawaii cost a lot more because they are coming from a very far distance in a very difficult way to transport them. Here in Seattle, we're a port town. We get lots of things on the ship from China. Uh, we are right by the border of Canada. We have train tracks that take the goods all over the place. So we have no problem getting the goods. What we do have is taxes. So let me tell you how that works. And we all know if you're moving to Seattle, your biggest cost will be housing because yes, housing is super expensive here and where can you get a deal, right? So here's what I'm going to say. If you rent, this is rough ballpark info, but I have seen one bedroom places, kind of a, a mother-in-law basement type of thing, um, one bedroom apartment, rent for about 1000 to 1200 If you want to rent something bigger, like a house, I've seen that go for 2000 kind of in the shoreline area. And if you want a nice house or a larger house, that's going to be 3000 So if you're looking to rent, 
the rent is actually relatively affordable compared to buying. If you're going to buy something, I would give you a ballpark of about $300,000 to purchase a two-bedroom condo. I would say homes that you're going to want to be able to live in, not fixer-uppers, are going to cost about $500,000. And uh, the median price range in Snohomish County as of this date is $685,000 and it's a little bit less in Snohomish County, which is north of like Bothell and Shoreline. So I would say if you're buying a house in the million dollar plus range, that's probably a second, like a move up home. And if you have 2 million or more to spend, you're gonna be putting yourself into a luxury real estate situation. It may be an older home in one of the more prestigious neighborhoods close to Seattle and Bellevue, uh, like Medina, Clyde Hill, Yarrow Point. I have other videos of neighborhood tours there. You could also look at Magnolia, Broadview, uh, that's a gated community near the Arboretum, uh, the University of Washington area, Windermere, Laurelhurst, some of those uh, well-known, well-liked, older prestigious neighborhoods or you could look at buying something that's new construction, fairly large, 3,000 square feet, in a um, potential infill location in the city, so something new in an older neighborhood, or uh, newer construction in a newer neighborhood, but that's gonna be farther out, maybe Issaquah. A lot of folks relocating here from out of state who have money, like California type money, like Issaquah, which is an area east of Bellevue near Lake Sammamish. So, if you have more than three million, call me anytime, day or night. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm super serious here. The cost of living is um, is one of the barriers for moving in from most places, but we do get a lot of folks relocating from California, and we do have a lot of tech money here. We have a lot of doctors. We have enough high-income folks that uh, it keeps the real estate market pretty high and the land is scarce. People are paying, they're buying back their time. They're getting a better commute to work. They're getting a nicer property and, um, and that's what it costs. So if I haven't completely scared you away from moving or relocating to Seattle, you have at least a better understanding of what it's gonna cost to live here. If I missed, mm, mm, ugh, if I left out anything that was very important that you wanted to hear about, like maybe you don't go to Chipotle and you wanna know how much a Chick-fil-A sandwich costs or something like that, then you can leave that question in the comments and I will get back to you. Otherwise, subscribe, mash the bell sugar, as they say in North Carolina. And um, yeah, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.